So, atomic structure, critical parts that you need for here. Here's your typical atom picture, drawn not to scale. In the middle, you've got your protons and your nuclei, neutrons huddled together in the nucleus. You all know that. You know protons have a positive charge. They have this positive electric charge. One thing that I am introducing that you might not be familiar with is I'm going to be introducing some symbols. So this symbol P with a plus symbol means proton, P for proton, and then plus to remind us that it has a positive electrical charge. If you're wondering, can you have a negatively charged proton? Yes, it's called an antimatter proton. Hopefully we'll have time to get to that by the end of the semester. You also have neutrons. Neutron has zero charge, so its symbol is an N with a zero. Those are huddled together in the nucleus there. And then surrounding it, you've got a big fuzzball cloud of negatively charged electrons. So I'll use the symbol E minus for electron. I just get tired of writing electron all the time. And it's the attraction between the positively charged protons and the negatively charged electrons that sort of hold this whole kit and caboodle together. And how that all works will be the emphasis of our unit three. So unit three, we'll get into how that all works. Electrons, big focus of this course, probably worth discussing what are they made of. To our best of our knowledge, they are not made up of anything. They are the fundamental Peace. People have been trying, spending a whole bunch of money to smash them apart, but no luck. There's been a whole lot of effort trying to smash an electron apart, and no one's been able to do it yet. Maybe it's possible, but no one's been able to do it. We, if it is possible, we haven't hit it hard enough. That's very much the particle physics approach to everything. Hit it harder and see if it breaks. So... Electrons, fundamental building block. As far as we know, they're not made up of anything. Protons and neutrons, on the other hand, are a lot more fun little uh, situations because they are made up of smaller pieces. And these smaller pieces that make up protons and neutrons are called quarks. The word quark has a fun little story behind it. The word quark is, to my understanding, from a poem by James Joyce, Finnegan's Wake. And it w the, the line goes, three quarks for Muster Mark. If you're wondering what a quark is, because that's not very helpful, a quark is meant to be the sound of a seagull. So, quark, quark, quark! Like, seriously, that's where the word comes from. We so ran out of good ideas for names of things, and we've gone to, the, like, seagull sounds. So... Protons and neutrons, we're still better at astronomy. Who can't come up with something better than black hole or big bang? I mean, come on, at least have some imagination. Um, so, protons and neutrons are made up of quarks. There are six kinds of quarks, just FYI. And the stupid naming continues. We have up, down, strange, charm, top, and bottom. Those are their official scientific names, I kid you not. The sizes of the circles, so these things, as far as we know, don't really have a size. The sizes show you the masses, like how heavy this stuff is. So here's a proton for you. Here's an electron for you. And you can see that actually three of these quarks are heavier than protons. The top quark, the heaviest of the known quarks, actually has about the same mass as a gold atom, an entire atom of gold. So it's quite a heavy little thing. But those are all heavier than protons and neutrons, so what makes up a proton and a neutron? Protons and neutrons are made up of just these two, ups and downs. <clears throat> so a proton is made up of two ups and a down, two up quarks and one down quark. A neutron, on the other hand, is two downs and an up. So, you, so now you start doing math, and you're like, okay, I need the proton to have plus one charge, the neutron to have zero charge. I got two ups and a down, and two downs and an up. You play with those numbers, what do you get? You have that up quarks have a charge of two-thirds that of the proton. And down quarks are 
minus one third. And this works out. Think up, up, down. So that's two thirds plus two thirds minus a third gets you to plus one, and it all works out. Minus a third, minus a third, plus two thirds gets you to zero neutrons. They work out. So these things have weird little fractional charges. What's the important? There's a lot of stuff that's just kind of for your interest on here. What's your big takeaway for this? Electrons are fundamental. To our knowledge, cannot be broken apart. Protons and neutrons are made up of smaller stuff. That's your big punchline. And then I threw in a bunch of fun modern stuff just because it's fun. That's enough particle physics for the day. I could go on that all semester, but we're not going to. So the other key things to know about atoms, that protons and neutrons are very, very close to the same mass. The neutrons are a tiny bit heavier, but not much. Electrons, on the other hand, are way lighter, way lighter than protons or neutrons. In fact, the electron is the lightest known particle to have electric charge with a mass of this number. Don't ever worry about memorizing these numbers. I'll give them to you. I don't believe in memorizing the numbers. I know them because I've used them enough, but don't bother with it. So it's that tiny little number. Protons, on the other hand, much bigger. What do I want you to take away from this? Protons are way bigger than electrons. And, you know, Roughly 2,000 times if you're, if you're, you know, trying to do math in your head. 2,000 is a rough number. It's 1,836 times to be specific. So, protons, way heavier. Or if you prefer to think about atoms instead of protons and neutrons, you can think about a helium atom. You know, two protons, two neutrons, two electrons. Helium. The electrons make up 0.03% of the mass of helium. 0.03% of the mass of helium is electrons. So electrons don't weigh squat. They don't really matter as far as mass goes. <clears throat> However, the nucleus, while all of the mass... Yes, sorry. It has a little bit. Yeah, 9.11 times 10 to the minus 31 kilos. Very, very little. Not much, but a little bit. And so while the nucleus has most of the mass, there's not, it doesn't take up a lot of space. So the standard analogy that people make is if you blow up the atom to the size of a large college football stadium, bigger than ours, this is uh, University of Southern California's in Los Angeles, if you blow the atom up to that size, the nucleus is roughly the size of a marble. So atoms are a whole bunch of empty nothing. They're a whole bunch of empty nothing. The nucleus is about the size of a marble, but that is 99.97% of the mass is in that marble, comparatively speaking. Okay? So these are the big important features of atoms for this class. The big important features of atoms here are electrons and protons are charged, neutrons are not. The size of the charge on the electron and proton is the same, but the signs are different. So same magnitude, different sign. And that opposite attract is what holds the atom together. We'll come to that. Protons and neutrons, same mass. Electrons, way lighter. Protons and neutrons, made of stuff. Electrons, fundamental. And nucleus, super tiny relative to atom. Those are your key, like, takeaways from this review of the atom spiel.